guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Sarah here with Furniture Flip by Sarah. And in today's video, I'm gonna be making over this cabinet here. So I've had this cabinet for quite a while. It's been in storage, but I finally feel inspired to make it over. So my vision for this piece is there is a CB2 cabinet that has a very similar shape. So I'm gonna be taking a lot of inspiration from that and trying to dupe this cabinet into that. Without further ado, let's get into the video. I'm going to start out by removing the doors and some of the old hardware that is on the inside. I'm just using my Dewalt drill with the right head to fit the screw. So now that I got all of the pieces off, the doors are off and doors are off, I'm gonna go in and use some wood filler on any areas that need it. Some areas where the veneer came off, I'm gonna be painting, but I still wanna add a bit of wood fill into some of these cracks and on the top here to repair some of the veneer and just really fill in anywhere so I'm left with a nice smooth finish. So I'm just going to use a spackle knife to get the wood fill out and scrape it onto the piece. So while the wood fill dries, I'm going to be working on the door fronts. Now the CB2 piece you can see has kind of this bubbled effect on the wood. So what I did to recreate that is I went to Home Depot and I purchased these eight foot pieces here and they are called a half moon. I will put the uh, SKU number and link them down below for you guys. These are pretty pricey so I don't think I'm going to fully cover the door. I need to see um, how far it gets me. So in Canada, I picked up this eight foot piece and it was 18 something, so about $19. So I'm hoping I can get at least three pieces um, across. I'm gonna, so I'm going to start to cut them down, not perfectly because I want to um, cut them after they're all glued to get an even straight line but I'm going to do like a rough cut and leave a little bit extra and see how many I can get across. If I need to, I will just simply space them out. Um, so I'm just going to kind of play around with that design and hopefully this helps give me that CB2 uh, dupe look. So to cut the piece down, I have measured where I need to cut. I just have a simple table saw, nothing fancy. And um, once it's turned on, I'm just going to simply press it down until it cuts the wood and then release the saw back up and I will have a cut piece. I'm just going to continue that with all of my six uh, pieces here and then we will place them on the door. And I will be wearing my respirator mask just because this will create a lot of dust. Well, I cut up five pieces because I didn't realize I thought they were all the same. I grabbed them all from the same bin, but this is a quarter round where this is a half moon. So this piece is not gonna work. I'm gonna have to bring this back. 
So hopefully, if you guys can see the difference, these ones are flat and this is like a corner detail piece. So that was my mistake. I should have double checked all of them. So I have five pieces cut. Let's see what design we can come, can come up with. So I think I've figured out my design pattern. So I will be changing out the hardware. So I will be filling this bottom hole, but I think leaving a gap here will help me kind of create a place for the knob without it being too overpowering. I'm happy with this design. I am gonna be sanding down the doors, the original veneer to somewhat match um, what we're working with here so I can stain the doors to look like that CB2 piece. To sand down the veneer on these doors, I have a 120 grit sandpaper for my surf prep sander. This is great, I have it hooked up to my shop back. So I'm just gonna attach it to this Velcro sheet here and once it's ready to go, I can start sanding. So it was at this point after sanding this piece down, I realized the look of the CB2 piece was just not going to work for this. Um, there was too much veneer damage and the original wood finish was just not um, like raw enough to match the new lumber that I bought to put on this piece. So I just thought it would look too mismatched and out of place. So after sanding it down, I decided to just paint everything and you will see that later on in the video. So now that the piece is sanded down, I'm going to give it a quick clean with this super clean degreaser and a microfiber cloth. This is why it's so important to clean your pieces. Now I'm just gonna take a damp cloth with some water and give it another wipe to remove any chemicals or residue. So I have my design laid out here. I'm gonna start gluing down my pieces. I'm gonna be using some scrap wood as dividers to make sure the design is even for each drawer and the spacing between each piece. I'm just gonna be using some Gorilla wood glue to glue these down. So I ended up getting Mr. Furniture Flip to help me cut these um, ends down. So I got all that cut. There was a few spots where the veneer lifted because we cut so close to the edge. So I'm just wood filling those. And then once that dries, I can sand it down and start priming everything.
Camera ended up cutting out when I started to prime this piece, but I'm using the Ben Shellac Base Primer. This is by far my favorite primer. I love using it. The price has gone up quite a bit, but I still recommend it. There was a little bit of bleed through on the inside, so I ended up just covering this piece with two coats. Once I let the primer dry overnight, I ended up sanding it down with my surf prep sander. I am using the sponge sander for this and you can see how easily it is getting in between all of those details that I added. This is great just for sanding in general or for detailed pieces. It is amazing and I definitely recommend. I will link it down below for you guys. So now that everything is primed and sanded, before I go ahead and start painting, I just wanna go and make sure all of the spacing in between these wood details that I added are filled. So you can see, might be kinda of hard to see on camera, but there's some gapping between the door and the piece. So what I'm gonna to do to fill that, and this is definitely optional, but I just think it looks more professional, and it's only gonna take about 10 minutes and $3. So I am using the Alex Dat Plus, this is a paintable caulking. I just have it in a gun and I'm just going to run it along the edge and wipe it back. wipe back the excess I'm just using a blue shop cloth that I have just soaked in water this way I can get all the residue off and then if there's any other spots that need it I could take this excess and add it to that like right here and this stuff works a lot better than a wood filler for detailed spots like this just because you can easily wipe it off and let it dry for about 20 minutes before painting. Before I paint these, I'm just gonna use my Dewalt drill here to drill some new hardware holes for the knobs I ordered. I will also link them down below and I will share them later in the video. Perfect, that easy, and we have a new hole for the new knobs. So to paint the piece, I am going to be using this color here by Benjamin Moore. This is in their advance line in a semi-gloss finish. I have a microfiber roller. I will link this down below. And then I just have a pretty brush, pretty brush, this is their extra large handle. These are by far my favorite brushes. And I am just going to pour my paint. I have my tray here lined with some tin foil. So I like to brush the corners or edges where it's harder for the roller to get. So I'm just going to take my brush, run it right here where the piece meets on the bottom. And then you wanna make sure your roller is super saturated. This will help to avoid any roller marks and give you that flawless finish. So once I do that, I am just going to roll my paint on.
Once everything was painted and I let it dry, they recommend you wait 16 hours in between coats. I have gotten away with um, about six hours in between coats to help it go by a little bit faster. But once the, everything was dried, I just went back and added the doors. I didn't do anything to the hinges, hinges because they were already gold and they matched the hardware perfectly. The hardware that I ended up adding is definitely my new favorite. They are these brass knobs from Amazon. I'll link them down below for you guys. They're super solid. I believe they're about $34 Canadian for a pack of four. So you're getting a pretty good deal for a really good quality knobs share the final look of this piece just a little glimpse of the before this dated wood I would believe it's a microwave cabinet is now this beautiful detailed stunning cabinet it, it's great because you could store a microwave inside you could use it as a little coffee bar or even to store some alcohol or toys in a toy room it's so multifunctional I love the way it turned out I will see you guys in my next furniture flipping video Thank you.